So for these ones here, we want to undo the calculation. So we need to undo with an opposite operation. So we undo times with divide, add, we undo add with subtract, we undo squares with square roots, we undo square roots with squares. So here I have the calculation, some number square rooted equals 3. So we can guess this number, it's probably going to be 9, but we can also show what this number is by undoing this calculation. And undoing that square root, we're going to square to undo this. So square and square root undo each other. So we're going to be left with x. But if I square one side, I have to square the other side. So I end up with x equals 9. And by undoing both sides here, what we can do is we can actually show the solution here. So here we have some number square root equals 5. So if the side length is 5, the area should be 25. Well, we can show that again by using an opposite. I undo square root with square. I have to balance by both the equation by doing the same to both sides. And then I can show that the area that we started with here was actually 25. So this question here says, well, what side length so we square side length so that represents side length so what side length squared gives me the area of 25 well the answer should be 5 and so but there's also some other number squared that gives me 25 so when I square negative 5 I should also end up with positive 25 so this is a little bit though I'm going to write the answer here x is equal to positive 5 and negative 5 now, for now, we're, we're not going to be too worried about the negative, but it's important to understand that when we undo squares with square root, I actually only get one of the answers positive. And so when we undo this, we have to remember that we're going to end up with not just the positive, but we also have to worry about the negative. And this is something we worry about a little bit more in grade 9, 10, 11, but in grade 8 we really should start thinking about this that when we undo a square we have to remember that there's both a positive and negative solution and what that also implies is that the square and square root is not exactly perfect opposites of each other. They are opposites but they're not actually not perfect opposites. So here I'm going to undo the square again with square root so I get x is equal to 8. Okay, but again, because I squared the number and that could get rid of the negative, I have to be careful and remember that I'm going to add in it, uh, the positive and negative 8 as my solution. So there's two answers here. For e, some number squared equals negative. Well, that's not really possible. If I square a number, I'm always going to end up with a positive. So this is not possible. Although I can square root, I have an area of 100. I can know my side length here is going to be 10. I can't get the negative. So in this case here, we say there's no real solution, which actually means that there must be an imaginary solution. Okay, but for now, we're not going to worry about the imaginary. We're just going to say that there's no real solution here. And then lastly, we have a square root. We undo with square. I end up with square root and square undo each other. So on the left-hand side, I'm left with x. On the right-hand side, 3.1 squared works out to be 9.61. Okay, so the idea here is we can undo squares with square root. We can undo square roots with squares. And we can show a solution for this by sh doing the same to both sides. And we can actually show that the answer to that x is going to be, in this case, 9 when we undo the square here. So we, this process of undoing and keeping a balance is very important. We're going to have an entire unit on that. This is a very important concept. Looking at these ones here, the non-perfect squares. So non-perfect squares are a lot harder because 
we can actually draw a, squ a square with 12 squares inside with whole number side length. It doesn't work. We're going to have to have some kind of decimal side length because, you know, I can draw nine squares like this. Okay, so that's got a side length of three. But if I want to get 12, I can't use a whole side length, a whole square along the edge. Okay, to get 12, I've got to kind of go part way around and that's going to give me three more squares along there. So they're not easy to draw. And the reason is because we don't get a whole number side length when we start with an area of 12 and square root it. So we need to use our calculators here. So you're going to need a calculator for this unit. And we need to be able to use the square root button on the calculator. So when I square root 12, I get 3.46. Four dot dot dot. This is an irrational number. This is a decimal that never ends and never repeats. And to get 12 squares, I have, I can't use 3 because 3 gives me 9. I can't use 4, four along the edge because that gives me 16 squares. So I have to use 3 and a little bit extra. And that little bit extra is going to give me, go from 9 squares to 12 squares. Okay, so this is going to be my 0 0.46, 0 0.46 along the outside. So it is not a perfect square. So these are re these are a lot more awkward than the perfect square ones where we can just draw whole number side lengths. But we can do these using our calculator. So again, we need a calculator to do these questions. So the square root of 130 works out to be a little bit bigger than... 11 because 11 squared is 121 so 130 squares can be made this from a side length of 11.401 dot 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 okay so i'm just going to leave that as point four 11.40 so a square with side length 11.40 will give me 130 squares Square root of 55 works out to be 7.416. I'm going to round that to 4, 2. Okay, and so that means that a side length of 7 gives me 49 squares. A side length of 8 gives me 64. So somewhere in between is going to give me the 55 squares that I want. Okay, again, the number inside the square root represents a number of square area. So that's the number of squares. That's the side length. That's the number of squares. That's the side length. If I want to find the number of squares that give me 101, well, I need to square root. Square root. Square root of 101 is going to be just a little bit bigger than 10. Because 10 squared is 100. So it's going to give me 10.049. So I'm going to round that to 5. And because... The number inside here could have been negative or positive length squared gives me positive. I'm going to remember to put a plus minus there. So same thing here. I'm going to square root both sides. The square root of 77 is equal to 8.77. Okay, that decimal keeps going. We're going to round that. And then I'm going to make sure I put a plus minus there. And then lastly, I'm going to square root to undo the square. The side length square gives me 18 squares. So the side length here is square root of 18, which is 4.242. So I'm going to round that to 4.24. And I'm going to remember my plus minus. So lastly, we want to draw a picture for this. Okay, for... For C, if I want to draw a picture for square root 55, well, I know that I've got a 7.42 length approximately. Okay, so I'm going to have you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.42. So there's 7. And then I'm going to do the same here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven point four two. Okay, so there's my seven here. So seven point four two. 
and so the area just on the outside here is a kind of that little bit extra that we have to add on so there's 49 plus that area along the outside is going to give me the extra six squares to make up the 55 squares for 18 here I know that my side length is a little bit more than four which means that I could make 16 okay so here's four by four there's my 16 squares here Okay, I want 18 squares though, so to get 18 squares in here, I need that little bit extra along the outside here to give me the extra two squares to make the 18 squares inside that diagram. 